Hello, how are you all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to look at a 2013 Land Rover LR2. This Land Rover has a no start condition or really a no crank and no wake up. Let me show you what I mean. If I take the ignition switch and we hit the ignition switch, nothing happens. None of the dash, none of the instrument, everything stays dead. Now, right away, I think that I have a communication, a bus communication problem on this Land Rover. That means if I go get a scan tool and I take the time to get into it, I'm not going to get much data because the bus is down. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get an oscilloscope and I want to get into the bus lines just to see if they're up or down. And then we'll make our next decision. We need to set up a couple of things. I need a battery charger on the car. So let's go ahead and get that set up so we can take a look at those bus lines. We got a battery maintainer on this. Land Rover now. So now I want to go ahead and I want to get a breakout box set up on the DLC and get the scope connected. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we're going to connect the oscilloscope ground to the battery ground so the voltage drop readings on the oscilloscope will be correct. The first thing I want to do on this Land Rover is I want to get a wiring diagram. I need to understand how the wiring is done on this vehicle's communication network in order to diagnose it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the wiring diagram. I brought up a computer data lines wiring diagram. The first thing I always want to do is I want to look at the DLC connector. So I want to look at it's 6 and 14 first off. This blue white wire is can high off of 6 and the white wire is can low. I want you to notice that it comes in and directly stubs into the wiring system on this. Now, what that does for me right now is it gives me a huge advantage because I know that the DLC is directly connected or coupled into these wires. If those wires go to another module, I don't know whether that module is going to isolate me or not. So if I'm on the DLC, I might only be seeing the data that would be on a scan tool, or if I don't even have a scan tool connected, there'll be nothing there, and I might think that I don't have communications because there's nothing there. But that isn't true. There's nothing until you plug a scan tool in. On this car, since we're hardwired into the CAN lines in the main transmission, the CAN, the DLC is part of the CAN system, so this is great. The other thing I want to do is I want to take a look at the, the medium speed bus. So we can see that right here, the purple orange and the gray orange. And these two wires are going to come up out of the bus and they're going to come in to my front junction box and we can see that they're marked right here by MS CAN L and MS CAN high. That's medium speed. Now medium speed CAN is something that's working between 10 kilobit seconds and 125 kilobit seconds. CAN C, which is CAN high speed, works between 125 and 1 meg. It's a much faster network to where I can have more activity and exchange more messages. On things that are low speed, like for instance, the seats and so on, um, windows, I don't need a fast bus for that, so those are on medium speed. So one of the first things I always want to do during my diagnosis early is I want to get the fob and I want to see if I can activate it. Now I can activate the door lock systems. That tells me that the medium speed is probably up and working, but the entire car is dead. The seats won't move, nothing moves in this car. Everything is dead, but I can unlock the doors, so the lock modules are active. So we would need to see where those are. So now, the first thing we want to do now is I want to get into these two bus systems. I want to get into the high speed and the medium speed, and I want to look at those waveforms to see what's going on. So let's go ahead and get into the breakout box with the scope. I've connected channel 1 of the scope to CAN high and channel 2 to CAN low and this is on the CAN C high speed. I've connected channel 3 on the medium speed high and the medium speed channel 4 is connected to the medium speed low. So now we want to take a look at those CAN signals on a scope to see what's going on on this Land Rover. Now that we have the oscilloscope connected into these CAN bus lines, let's go ahead and take a look at the scope so let's bring it up. 
So here we have the scope and we want to go ahead and look at these lines. So we have the yellow and red and that's can high and can low for C and we got it the green and blue and that's medium speed can. Now we see no activity. Now one thing I know is when I use the key I add activity. So here we go, we can see the activity and we can see that this is CAN medium speed. Now I want to make a point that this isn't medium speed as traditional as in fault tolerant. This is CAN high and they're using a CAN high bus to provide uh, the medium speed bus with. This is a much faster bus. Notice that my recessive bit or the bias voltage on this is going to be at 2.5 volts and then I'm going up a volt and down a volt from the from the 2.5 so I'm going to 3.5 on can high and I'm going to 1.5 on the can low and that bus is functional so the low speed bus is working now if I come over here and I hit the button I activated the low speed but the high speed is dead and the high speed is pulled down to close to zero. So the high speed bus seems to be grounded. So I want to set the scope up just a little bit differently for what we want to do. I want to turn off this so we don't get confused. And I want to just have this on here and we want to lower our voltages as well. So now we're going to come down and we're going to get a better look at all this. And on this one, so now I have can high on the top and can low on the bottom. And again, if I push the button, I can see that I have something. Now notice when I push the button, I don't know if you saw that, we have some something happening on these lines right here. So I want to go look at that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to get a recording and I'm going to push this button. There we go. Right here, you can see where something happened when I activated that. So what this tells me is that we're not totally grounded, right? Do you see these spikes coming out of there? Well, this, this is the bus can have something happening. So it's not totally grounded. Now, what I want to do just really quick to double check what's happening is I'm going to take the TTL out on my scope and I want to put it into this bus line just to make sure that they're not grounded. But this makes me think they're not grounded. But I always double check things. So I'm going to take the TTL out and we're going to feed it into this line and we're going to make sure that we see a toggling. That tells me we don't have a totally grounded bus. So let's set up the TTL. The eScope Elite has outputs and inputs. So the pull down out will sync power and the TTL out will send a signal out. I want to send a 0 to 5 volt signal out, so I'm going to get into the TTL out. Now is what I want to do is we need to come over and we need to set this, this up for our application. So I want to come to outputs and I don't want a time, so we're going to take the time out of here. We're going to put it at 0. Now we're going to start it. Now we're sending out a signal on this line. So I want to come over here and we want to touch the, one of the CAN lines and we can see that we've got a waveform being produced. So once I'm touching the line and I can see that it has movement, let me go down just a little bit so it's easier to see this. And then we're going to touch it and you're going to see that we have activity. Do you see that square wave in there? Okay, what that's telling me is these aren't directly grounded. So that's a really good thing. So I don't have a pinched wire or anything. This is one of the modules that's bad or they're not powered or something. We need, we need to get there. But this is some type of a module that's being pulled down. So now I know that a module is pulling the bus down. And that has to do with the CAN transceiver failing. The CAN transceiver on CAN systems is what uh, does the arbitration, they set the priority, they say which module can get in in what order, what messages will be sent and received in what order, and they also control the voltages. So when one of these fails, the voltage goes down. Now this car was brought to this shop. This is another shop's car that they've just put 
put a head on this engine and the head hasn't run when they got the head on apparently the car's totally dead um, now they brought it over to another shop and now we're going to diagnose this car to figure out where our problem is so you know maybe the engine control module or the tranny module that's my first thought but i'm going to warn you guys all of that's hearsay i don't know anything about this car so we're going to apply a strategy like i do on all of these systems don't let the data when you come to a shop sway you we're going to go through a certain set order and we're going to do this in a prioritized manner to where i know i can find this quickly and efficiently. And that's going to be by going and finding the easiest computers that I can get unplugged while we watch the bus. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what we've got here. So we're going to go back to the wiring diagram real quick. And now we can see that I've got this, this module that's behind the glove box. I'm okay there. We've got obviously we've got the steering modules and so forth we got the and then we come down here and we've got some other modules the engine control module is down here the transmission control module is here um, the ABS module so those are going to be the first modules that I want to go look at because I can see them under the hood and I can unplug them really quickly. So let's go ahead and, and unplug a few of these modules that are under the hood and see what we get on the scope. So I've located the modules under the hood that we want to disconnect. The first one is the engine control module. And he's right here. tough no change on the scope so once you disconnect the modules we want to go ahead and put the modules back together the next module that we want to disconnect is this tranny module no change Disconnected the ABS module, no change. Okay, we're going to disconnect the fuse box panel. No change. Here's the headlight control module, I got it disconnected, no change. Here we're taking the occupant sensor loose. No change. No change. I want to show you something. Where's the wire coloring code? Do you see how a white blue and a white really doesn't exist in that harness to make sure to make positive that this is the wiring and the connector that you want I want to do something I want to send a signal into the the DLC and I want to read it here with the scope now if I send the TTL out into the DLC into the CAN high and low lines and I read it up here I know that even though the wire colors are wrong I've got the right wire so let me show you how we're going to do that I'm going to take out the CAN high speed C line and I'm going to put the TTL out I want to take channel 1 and now I'm going to take channel 1 and we're going to take this connector and we're going to go through the connector and what we're going to do is we're going to feed that in to each one of these while we're watching the scope that's it right there so that can high speed is part of this connector even though the wiring isn't the right color this is the center control switch module there's no change 
Now I've got the SRS module which is underneath this. I'm going to wait to do that and I've got some module that's underneath the left rear. It says it's for the differential assembly to control it. So let's get under the car and see what that's about. Here's the rear differential control module. It's on the differential. Here's the connector. There it is, the scope came up. Okay guys, now that we've got the can line fixed, let's make sure the car can come up. So now I want to make sure the dash, the dash is lit, we have communications. We're going to go ahead and try to start it. Now remember that the shop that did this, that head has just been put on and the engine has not been started. So let's try it. Hey, the shop did a really good job. The engine starts. This car is ready to return to them. Um, and what they'll have to do is they're gonna need to put the rear end a diff control into the vehicle and it will need to be programmed. And then this car will be ready to deliver to the customer. What I really want you guys to understand and take away from a problem like this, this is not that hard of a problem. Even though the whole dash is dark and it seems so difficult, it really isn't. Just follow a logical diagnostics, let each test drive the next test, and you too will have success in your service base.